Good evening, I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, vicious and personal. President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in a war of words. Words that are shocking considering we are talking about the heads of the executive and legislative branches of the United States of America. President Trump, just a short time ago, questioning the most powerful Democrat in America's fitness. It was sad when I watched Nancy all moving the movement and the hands and the craziness. And I watched it. That's, by the way, a person that's got some problems. The president attacking Pelosi's extraordinary press conference. But there is something about Pelosi, because the president who has claimed that when he is hit, he hits back 100 times harder. He has said that. Well, he sure didn't. In fact, his attacks paled in comparison to Pelosi's needling of the president again and again and again, questioning whether he's fit for office. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. This is not behavior that is, uh, uh, rises to the dignity of the office of president of the United States. Your prayer comments almost suggest you're concerned about his well-being. I am. An intervention. Uh, concerned about his well-being, these are serious charges. They're not just casual insults of a president by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And Pelosi kept going, slamming Trump's ability to run the White House and making him look like a child. I can only think that he wasn't up to the task. I pray for the president of the United States. The president, again, stormed out. I think, what, first pound the table, walk out the door. What? Another ten temper tantrum. Actually, ardently pray for the president because we need. I don't know. Sometimes when we're talking to him, he's un, he, he agrees, and then I, I said one time, "Who's in charge here?" Because you agree, and then all of a sudden, something changes. What goes on there? Who's in charge? You have to wonder how truly ardent those prayers are. Look, the hits were relentless. So how did Trump fight back? Well, first, he sent his staff out to, to counter this whole temper, temp, temper tantrum thing to say, no, 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 he was calm. Kellyanne, what was my temperament yesterday? In the Very room? calm, no temper tantrum. What was my attitude when I walked in? No, Did I ever scream? No, you were very calm and you were very direct. What was my attitude yesterday at the meeting? Uh, Mercy's right. Uh, Kellyanne's right. You were very calm. <laughs> okay. Well, then, after he put each of them, I mean, can you imagine one of them going, actually, you were a little out of control, Mr. President, my boss. Okay, then he finally came out with this classic, but still just as bizarre as ever line. I'm an extremely stable genius. Okay. Ah, the good old stable genius line. Just set Pelosi up as if she was waiting there on her phone for a tweet. She tweeted just a short time ago, when the, quote, extremely stable genius starts acting more presidential, I'll be happy to work with him on infrastructure, trade, and other issues. Yet despite the escalating attacks and the back and forth that, that you would think was part of some sort of a fictional story that I just told you, and it's all fact, Pelosi still says she's still not ready to go down the path of impeachment. The president is engaged in a cover-up. It's in plain sight. It cannot be denied. Ignoring subpoenas, obstruction of justice, yes, these could be impeachable offenses. We can get the facts to the American people through our investigation. It may take us to a place that is unavoidable in terms of impeachment or not. Uh, but we're not at that place. We're not at that place because supposedly, I guess, we are still praying. Abby Phillip is out front live outside the White House. Abby, the president clearly was flustered by Speaker Pelosi today. Aaron, it does seem that Nancy Pelosi has gotten under President Trump's skin. Almost to that point, President Trump seemed to struggle to find some kind of nickname for her. He tried out Crazy Nancy, but then said he, he shouldn't do that because he's already called Bernie Sanders crazy. It's a bit of a sign that President Trump is struggling to figure out how to deal with this person who seems to be maneuvering around him and outmaneuvering him in certain situations. But what our sources are also telling us this is all about is the president's growing frustration 
with all of the inquiries happening on Capitol Hill that Nancy Pelosi is basically leading the charge for. Uh, the president feels like as these inquiries are getting closer to his personal finances, his family, uh, they are encroaching on these things that he thought were off limits. He said today to reporters that the Democrats are trying to impeach him, uh, uh, trying to get rid of him for 2020. And in order to do that, they are trying to attack him by a thousand stabs. A thousand stabs mm -hmm. was the way that he put it. So President Trump is airing this frustration to his friends and to his allies. And I think having a, a difficult time figuring out uh, how to best confront that. And he's fed up and told Nancy Pelosi, I am not going to do anything with you and other and the other Democrats legislatively until these investigations end. Now, the trouble is Pelosi seems to have made it clear that she is not going to accede to that uh, ultimatum. And, and so mm -hmm. I think what we saw here at the White House this afternoon was the president's frustration bubbling over. He took some of the same attacks that he that Nancy Pelosi had lobbed against him and fired them right back at her. That's another sh uh, clear sign that President Trump is a little bit rattled by this standoff with Pelosi. All right. Thank you very much, Abby. And I want to go now to a Democrat who's been calling for impeachment proceedings against President Trump, Congressman Don Beyer. So, Congressman, thanks for your time. Let me just start with uh, this back and forth, which, 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 as I said, it almost reads like some sort of a fiction or, or comedy, except for it's, it's real. And because it's real, it's quite disturbing. Do you think the speaker's comments about President Trump were appropriate? Oh, I do. And I know how frustrated she was and the other Democrats that were in that meeting. We would like to get to an infrastructure bill. And they had the meeting just a few weeks ago that, where they theoretically had an agreement for $2 trillion. And we would like to get to agreement on the USMCA, the, the new NAFTA Part 2. So when the people like Nancy Pelosi and Richie Neal and Sandy Hoyer goes in, and the first thing he does is wrap his hands on the table and walk out, it's, it's incredibly frustrating when you're trying to govern and legislate. So, you know, the president obviously retaliated to her words, right? I mean, she used the word cover up multiple times today, right? Temper tantrum, yeah. you know, ardently praying and praying for him. I mean, it, it was it was something. And he retaliated. Here he is, Congressman. She's a mess. Look, let's face it. She doesn't understand it. And uh, they sort of feel she's disintegrating before the rush. Crazy Nancy, I tell you what, I've been watching her, and I have, I have been watching her for a long period of time. She's not the same person. Uh, she's lost it. So she's calling for an intervention uh, because ostensibly he's losing his mind. He's saying she's losing her mind uh, in an incredibly derogatory manner. Is, is, is what he said okay because of what she said? Is this all now okay, just at the same no, level? No, it's not okay. First of all, it's laughable to think that Nancy Pelosi is falling apart. I think she is absolutely at the height of her skills. I've never seen her more focused, a more concentrated. She is a difficult battle right now because on the one hand, Democrats control the House. We have a huge agenda, some of which we've already passed. A lot of things that we want to do to move this nation forward. You know prescription drug prices, the cost of health care, infrastructure, cleaning up corruption. At the same time, she leads us, leads all Americans, in trying to hold the president accountable for many of his lawless actions. I mean, she's right on the cover-up. We've been trying to get his tax returns for a couple of months now, and the, the 1924 law is crystal clear. We had a memo just a week ago saying the Mnuchin's not going to turn over the tax returns. Yeah. We've been trying to follow up on Mueller's 10 instances of obstruction of justice which he didn't indict on because he said he believed that you can't indict a sitting president, and he left it to well, us. Right, and of course, well, he didn't directly leave it up to anyone, which is a, a separate issue about Mueller and whether there was a mistake made there about the lack of clarity. But yes, that is why we're in this position. Um, but let me ask you, because the, the, the speaker said today the president needs an intervention. She talks about a cover-up. And of course, uh, you all could intervene, right, with impeachment, which you support. Is she talking out of both sides of her mouth? She's trying to make people like you calm down, hold on, trust me, even as she's not doing what you think she should be doing? No, I, do, I don't agree that she's not doing. I think the four leading chairmen, uh, you know, judiciary and intelligence, et cetera, are doing everything they can within the law to get the right people to testify, the right documents. So what Speaker Pelosi has done is said, we're going to take this step by step by step. Um, I've joined a group of maybe two dozen Democrats saying, Beginning the inquiry of impeachment is probably the next right step. But we obviously will call for it, but it's up to her to decide when we move forward. So you respect when, when she won't do it, because, um, you know, she's not doing it. I know you're saying you need to, she's not doing that. And, and she did give a reason today. Let me just play it for you. 
The president's behavior in terms of his obstruction of justice, the things that he is doing, it's very clear. It's in plain sight. It cannot be denied. Ignoring subpoenas, obstruction of justice. Yes, these could be impeachable offenses. And I do think that impeachment is a very divisive place to go in our country. And what we can get the facts to the American people through our investigation, it may take us to a place that is unavoidable in terms of impeachment or not. Uh, but we're not at that place. I mean, that's so, pretty definitive. We're not at that place. You're saying that's the next yeah. step. So has she made you change your mind and back off, or do you believe that she's ready to go there? I don't know if she's ready to go there. And maybe I'm a little ahead, although that's a value judgment, uh, on the being ready to do the impeachment inquiry. But I do respect um, her deep desire not to further divide the country. And, and it's, a, it's a really tenuous balance. It's a judgment call between fulfilling our responsibility to defend the Constitution, to not let a lawless president set that precedent for the years to come, and also try to bring the country back together. I think this is the first president in our history who's made his whole political strategy of dividing us rather than bringing us together.